Hello, it's Emilio here. We have this empty project, we're gonna do the dialog and we're gonna start off by using a user interface and inside of it, let's create one that it will be our dialog box. So I already have some assets here from before, but you can use whatever you like. I will have a version to download on the description, but basically you have here the font that we're gonna be using, a background for the dialog and an indicator for when the text is over. So if you haven't read the title, we're building a very basic dialogue box as in the style of RPG or a visual novel. And we will need, first of all, let's add the background. Let's see, control, texture red. Let's set this texture. Okay, it's a bit bigger. Let's set it now to scale and expand. And now when we modify the size here, now this texture right, let's set the layout to occupy the full rect. And we have it now as we want it. Now when we modify this, yeah, it changes the size. Now that we have the size desired, let's lock it and move it to the center of the screen. With this, Anchors that you have here, you can set where the element is going to align if the window size changes. And I want it to be anchored to here. So if we try the game, let's save it. Yeah. If we make it bigger, it will always stay in the lower part of the screen. So that's basic enough. But these anchors are very, very useful to use them. Okay. Now we need to add some text and we're going to go with the rich text label, which will enable us to write some text with different styles. There's a very good tutorial that you must check made by Johnny, which explains how to add effects to the rich text labels, but we're not going to be covering that. If you want to know more about it, you can visit the link in the description and you can see it because it's very, very good. Now let's make the text right occupy everything, same as with the background. And now let's write some placeholder text. We want to have the text with some styles for the feature, so I'm going to be using BV code. It's going to be enabled, and let's say, hello there, people from YouTube. This style is a placeholder. Okay, the font is very ugly, so let's change those settings. Scroll down, custom font. Let's go with a normal font and new dynamic font. As always, this process is kind of crazy, but just bear with me. Let's set here the font file, load font, the font that we want. Now let's make the size bigger. It's kind of out of position, but this will be fixed if we resize it a little bit. Yeah, that will reset it. And let's add some margin to the size. So margin, let's add, I don't know, like, yeah, 15 and 15. And remember that these other two sides, you're going to be adding them by negative for some reason. Okay, so we never go outside of that. And let's change the color because it's kind of hard to see. So let's go with a dark brown, something like that. Yeah. Okay, now that we have this, we can maybe extend the text a little bit more. So we see like, hello world, this is a long dialogue. Okay, so now you see like the, the text is wrapping and everything. And there's one property here, which is percent visible, which if you change it, is it goes from zero to one and if you change it, you get this effect as if the text is writing like a very like visual novel or RPG style. So we will want to animate this. And the good thing about it is that we don't need to do anything special because we know that always is going to go from zero to one. Let's do it with twin. And as the description tells us, it's for animating node properties over time. So now that we have the twin that we're going to be coding later, let's add the last part, which is the icon indicator. Oof, this is very big. Okay, let's move it here. 
Okay, let's make it that size. Yeah. Okay. And this is something I will want to animate and actually do it with a regular node. Animation player, new animation, idle. And we select the node and we see these keys around here, which will create a keyframe for the timeline. So we click it, we create one. Now we go to the center and we move this value down. We click again, so we create this transition. And we now press the loop option. So when it ends, it will go back to the beginning and the auto play. So we don't have to say anywhere in our code that it has to be playing because we want this to be moving all the time. And let's go select the animation player, current animation, idle, and that's it. One thing I always like to add is instead of making this interpolation as linear, I use it as cubic so it goes more smooth. And that is what I want to show when the dialogue is already over and I want them to press enter or any key to continue. But we're going to be showing that later. You can close this animation panel now from here at the bottom. And let's start writing the code. Let's add to our dialog box a script, which is going to be called dialog box. And let's remove everything. We want to have our dialog on a variable. It's going to be an array because we want to have several parts for it. So let's say hello there. This tutorial is awesome. And the next value is going to be if you <laughs> like what you see, you can click the subscribe <laughs> button. <laughs> so basically I'm plugging myself here. And if you don't, if I want to add this, okay. And if you don't, you sh should do it anyway. Okay, this seems very positive. <laughs> So now that we have the dialog that we want to show, we want to show first this sentence, second this sentence, and third last sentence. And it will have to recognize how many you have. So if you want to write 10 messages or whatever, that's fine. To track that, we're going to be creating a new variable, which is dialog index, which is which one is the current one that we are using, zero being the first one. And we want to know if, if it finished or not so we can like display the indicator here uh, to say okay it's already done like you should press something to continue on ready we want to call a function that will display the text and every time we call that function the conversation will move forward so load dialog okay uh, let's create this function load dialog and if the dialog index is smaller than dialog size. So basically, if the one that we want to display, it's within the size of this, because we don't want to try to show the dialog number four, because we don't have any, and the program will give us an error. So we check the size, and you always have to be smaller than it, because we start with zero. So if that happens, we want to set the text, the rich text label. BB code text is going to be equal to the dialog and dialog index. So we select the first line and we add it to this rich text label. Please make sure to use the VB code text variable because you can say it here by using the text property, like any other label. But if you want to add style, and you will probably want to do that, especially like changing the name of the character to a color, so it's easier to remember, something like that, you will want to use the BB code. And even though this text gets copied over all the time, try to never 
modify this one and always use the BB code if you have it enabled. Now that we set the text, let's now make it add one dialog index plus one. So the next time that we run this function is going to show the next one. And we want to get on the process function, which remember this happens all the time. We want to check for the input of the player. So is action just pressed? Let's go with UI accept. So if they press enter, we're going to run again the load dialog function that we created. So the first time it's going to load the first one, it's going to add one to the index. So the next time we press enter, it's going to load the second one and it's going to be ready for the third one. Let's try it out. Let's see how it works. Okay. Hello there. This is this tutorial is awesome, which is the first line we have there. We press enter. We see the second and the third one. When we press again, nothing happens because we don't have anything else. So since we want to make it disappear, let's just remove the dialogue. So if the dialogue index is bigger than the size of the dialogue, let's just remove with this function, this node altogether. So it will end. Let's go. And it ended. Okay. Now let's do the animation and add the indicator on the side. For the animation, we want to have, first of all, set the rich text label percent visible to zero, because whenever we change it, we want to make sure that we are not showing anything. And now start using the twin. So for the twin, we want to use the interpolate property. And it has a bunch of requirements here, but it's very simple. You can read if you press control and you click on the twin name, you will go to the documentation and here you have all the explanation of how to use them. And if you want the best way to try it out is to create a twin function like we're going to be doing right now and use that as a sandbox so you can start modifying values and see how it works. Right now it's very simple. You select the node that you want to animate, the property that you want to change, the initial value and the end value. So this is the beginning, this is the end, and how long it's going to be taking for that action to happen. Then we're going to set some of the effects, the easing and things like that. There's a lot of effects that you can set here, especially like that interpolation, which will generate different styles. Um, but in this kind of animation that we want to do from zero to one, we don't really need anything super fancy. So let's go with the ones that were shown there. What node do we want to animate? The rich text label. What property we want to animate? Percent visible. What is going to be the first value? Zero. And at, by the end of the animation, we want it to be one. And how long is going to be taking? One. I think this is in seconds, but if not, it seems like it. Now we want to go with the values that we've seen on the documentations, which are trans linear and is in and out. So now that we have the interpolation here set on the twin, we need to make it start. So twin start. Let's try it out. This should now set the text, set the percent visible to zero, but it will go to one in one second and we make that animation start. Let's go. Hello there. Yeah. Press again. And last one. Okay. It's working. Now we need to show the player that they have to press a key to continue. Otherwise they're going to be waiting for something. Let's use the twin node signal and twin completed. So whenever a twin animation is completed, we want to emit that finished is true. So that the sentence already finished. Remember, this is the variable we were going to use. And every time we set a text, since we are going to be doing the twin start and everything, we want to set it to false because 
we are not finishing, we are starting. So finish false. Okay, now to update the visibility of the indicator here, we're gonna simply set the next indicator visible equal to finished. So if it is finished, we show it, and if it's not, we don't. Let's go ahead one last time, and we get the text. We press enter. That's the next one. And as you can see, when it's, when it's typing, the next dialog doesn't show, and yeah. So this is a very simple way of implementing a dialog system, and I hope you learned how to use the rich text labels with some twin animations. If you guys want to, I can add more things to it, maybe like a portrait for different characters, a name for the character that is talking, or many other elements. Again, I want to insist, there are very cool effects that you can add to this kind of text, and you should watch Johnny's video to see how you can do that. Thank you very much, especially to my Patreons. Thank you guys very much. I'm really, really, really grateful that you guys are supporting me, and I hope to release another video soon. And see you guys next time. Bye.